that would change the course of Venetian history. As the Venetian trading families sat down to eat, they all received an unexpected house call. In just a few days, thousands of Venetians were arrested. Stripped of their possessions and thrown into prison. The Venetians had been caged by their trading partner. Humiliated, they could do nothing but wait. For centuries, Venice and Constantinople had been allies. But now, they'd become the worst of enemies. News of their arrests traveled fast to Venice. You can imagine how the people felt here when they heard that thousands of their fellow citizens had been jailed in Constantinople. Brothers, fathers, sons, even mother and daughters had all been thrown into prison. It was the greatest threat to Venice, since the city had risen from the swamps of the lagoon. The Venetians decided to negotiate the release of the prisoners. There was only one man for the job, Enrico Dandolo, the greatest merchant seaman of the age. But it was a trap. He was taken prisoner and probably tortured. Either that, or he was beaten up on the streets of Constantinople. All we know is, when he got back to Venice, he was blind. We will never know the truth of how Enrico Dandolo lost his sight. But one fact we can be sure of, even blinded, stuck in his palace on the Rialto, he never abandoned the cause of the Republic. Venice had been brought to her knees. Byzantium had stamped on this city's growing economy and wiped out her great trading links with the East. But the Venetians were not about to give in. Let me tell you something about us Venetians. We really stick together. Living in this little island in a lagoon, we have to help each other. Every building is an achievement. The Venetian character is in the bridges and in the stones around me here. How did Venice show her defiance to Constantinople? Let me show you. We built this, St. Mark's Square. Perhaps the world's most beautiful urban space. The surrounding buildings are later, but the piazza itself, its proportions and shape, was created in the 12th century. Planned, cleared of other buildings, and paved over at the very moment Venice faced financial ruin. To build the square, Venetians reached into their own pockets. The money came from everyone, from the doge to the ordinary merchant. For more than 800 years, this square has been a showpiece of Venetian civic pride. 
swept daily at dawn to the Immaculate, we care passionately about this open space. Come on, Diamo. Anche qui a San Marco. Sì, tutta la mattina come sempre. Da tanto. Da 22 anni. Va bene. Aspettiamoci. Bella vedere la mattina senza niente. Non è bella, è incantevole. Però. E nonostante tutto io me la godo tutte le mattine. Delle volte mi siedo anche là e aspetto il sorgere del sole. Mi faccio baciare dal sole e dal riflesso dei, dei monumenti. E che è strano perché se ogni volta che si rivede la piazza, anche per i veneziani, è come se fosse la prima volta. Esatto. È vero? È come una donna, una donna. amata, <ride> ripetutamente amata. Sì. St. Mark's Square was to be the first example of Venice's powers of defiance and recovery, symbolized in great architecture. And Venice had created a great stage set for its ceremonial life, an arena for pageantry and celebration of the Republic. The earliest image of the square from 1496 shows the feast day of St. Mark, and it captures the spirit of ritual that grew up around the piazza almost as soon as it was built. More than anything, the creation of this square showed one thing. Venice would not be defeated. And once the square was complete, to further strengthen their assault, Venice elected a new doge. Venetians greeted him with enthusiasm. Even though he was an old man, and it was over 20 years since he had been in the public eye. Enrico Dandolo. When Dandolo signed his oath of office on the 1st of January 1193, it brought to the office of Doge the greatest patriot Venice had ever known. In his oath, he swore to advance the cause of the Venetian Republic. But Dandolo would go further. At last, the Venetians had found a Doge whose ambition for the city would stop at nothing. In Enrico Dandolo, they had the master tactician, a brilliant strategist, and the consummate politician. For me to explain in English is very hard. Enrico Dandolo era un bugiardo, un falso, un maestro dell'inganno, un doppio giochista, un mago della propaganda. And he was always on the lookout to strengthen the Venetian Republic and its trading prospects. For a hundred years, Christian Europe had waged war against the Islamic world for possession of the Holy Land, in particular, Jerusalem. In the West, these campaigns became known as the Crusades. But the Fourth Crusade of 1201 was short of ships, manpower, and money. In April that year, the Crusaders sailed into the Venetian lagoon to ask Enrico Dandolo for Venetian backing. Venice had avoided serious involvement in all the previous crusades, but now Dandolo seemed interested. All of Christendom waited for his response. Let's think about it. What did Venice have to gain from a crusade to Jerusalem? We'd make the Pope happy, good. Everybody would like us, fine. But how important is that? But Dandolo agreed to help. Venice would build and pay for more ships and more men to sail in. 